Welcome. Welcome. I am John Halcyon Stin. It is such a treat to be spending this moment with you. Today's topic is good job versus not good enough. Um, I recently saw the movie Whiplash, and I'll try not to give any spoilers, but it is a movie about a young musician who striving to be the absolute best, best in the world, world class, remembered throughout history, just the best, and goes to the best school he can get into, really striving to get into the, the best class or the, the practicing band, or I guess the, the, the competitive band that's at that school that's led by this well-known, well-respected, and feared teacher. And the teacher's methods are extreme. And the teacher pushes so hard and, and just really, you know, demeans, insults, just, you know, makes for what I would guess is a very unpleasant environment. If it was a boss, you could probably sue for, you know, hostile work environment. Um, and a lot of feelings came up as I was watching it. Because there's a line in the movie when this teacher, who every all these students want to be in this class, they want to be in this this environment where they get pushed potentially to be their best. He says that the two, I'm not sure if it's the exact phrase, but said, you know, the two worst words in the English language are good job. And it reminded me of a conversation I had recently with a friend of mine, an old colleague, um, who was talking to me about his coaching that he's been doing with his, uh, his daughters, and he's caught, he's coaching their soccer teams and he was telling me about you know the way that he he teaches and instructs and pushes and it, I mean he wasn't <laughs> quite as um, extreme as this movie but he he definitely had the same attitude of like oh I will not say good job unless they did an exceptional job you know I will every time I will point out everything they do wrong I will you know I will push them if I think they can do better, they, I, will, I will definitely say so. Because these girls want to be there because they want to be the best. They want to be pushed. They want to, to, to be in an environment where they can grow and be the absolute best they can be. And it, at the time, that conversation really you know, shook me. Because I was, in my head, I always thought that it was so, I don't know, like barbaric to, to just yell and push kids so much when they're playing sports and playing games and playing music, you know, like, this is isn't this supposed to be hobbies and fun? And the way that, that my, my friend had talked about it really shifted me a little bit. Like, I don't think I'm wired for it, but which came first, the wiring or this behavior? I mean, and, and what kind of things could I achieve in life, you know, if I had been pushed, you know, and, and, and so I find myself having a really hard time stomaching this experience of being pushed, but at the same time kind of wishing that I had some of that discipline, wishing that I had uh, maybe some of that drive for greatness. And then I start thinking, you know, well, is it, do you have to choose between being great or being happy? I mean, I have no doubt that all of these people who are on the best teams and the best musicians and the best actors, and that when they are winning, when their team's ahead and they, they are winning the championships, um, that they, are happy, but it kind of seems like every other moment of their life that they're feeling that not enough, not enough, not enough. I was talking to my dad, and I was like, you know, I had this conversation with my friend about their soccer team, and I was kind of blown away with with how how hard he was pushing his kids, and I was, and then, but then I just found read on my friend's 
uh, Facebook page last week that the team won state. They won the state championship. So uh, it, it works, you know. They're not, they're not just torturing children. They're pushing kids to be their best, and they are the best. And I was kind of marveling at this. And my dad's like, that's, that's, that's great, you know. They'll probably all be, you know, needing anti-anxiety medication in a couple of years. And I think that that was, it was kind of like, you know, yeah, it, it works to just practice, 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 and never feel like you're good enough. But there are also consequences to that. And one of those consequences is your sense of peace, your sense of happiness. I don't know, I mean, I think that you still can have strong self-esteem because you feel like you're a winner. It's just that there's that lack of peace because you, you, you have to fight for it and drive and you're not truly happy unless you're the best. You know you're better than almost everybody else, but unless you're the very best. And that's something that kind of hits home for me. I was never pushed in terms of, you know, practicing, practicing, but I, school came fairly easy to me and at a young age, I felt like I was the smartest kid in the class. And as I grew up and were put into circumstances where I was not, I was sent to a special school at one point, and my whole self-identity collapsed my, my, in, in dramatic ways. Like, I was depressed and suicidal in fifth grade because my, my identity of who I was uh, was chipped away at. I was the smart kid and, and I went to the school where I did not feel that way anymore. And, you know, other things too. I mean, life is confusing and the suffering of the world was hard for me to get my head around, but it was all triggered by this collapse in, in my self-identity. And so, and I should have prefaced this whole topic as saying, like, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going with this. This is just something that I've really been thinking a lot by, through talking with my friend, through watching the movie Whiplash, and through also noticing my struggles in recent years with discipline, with organizational structures, with pushing myself. You know, I think we live in a time when, I mean, I feel like I got by for many years and did well many years just by kind of following my instincts and doing when I was inspired to do the work that I required and it feels like things move so fast now and there's so much social media and there's so much information that you really have to be disciplined. You really have to have a structure. And I think back to if having some sort of Working well or, or knowing how to discipline yourself, I, I, I'm guessing, is part of this path of excellence um, through sports or the practice of different things. And I see people, you know, I have this deep admiration for people who practice anything. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Marvin Ong, Master Ong, does this. He's really active in the flow community. Actually, this next weekend, I'm going to be going to Joshua Tree at the Ignite Festival, where all sorts of incredible uh, fire performers that do poi, staff, fans, all sorts of fire tools will get together and kind of have like a conference. And I've been there twice and I'm just blown away with this community of people. And a lot of it has to do with their incredible discipline and their incredible work ethic of practice and of self-improvement. And maybe that is part of the, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how do you get to this place of excellence and, but without the path of misery and without the path of, of just constant frustration. And maybe, maybe what I've seen in these flow arts people is, is, is that. It's this, instead of living in frustration, it's a living in joy of learning, and learning of, of, of excitement, of, of getting in the flow and getting your best potential. And to be fair, I'm projecting a lot onto everybody. Perhaps, perhaps the path of you know, a child prodigy golfer 
gymnast, whatever, is joy-filled, and it's not filled with the pressure that I perceive it to be. Um, but I do think that there, there, there seems to be a difference between a the world or self, like feeling the pressure of the world that I need to be the best and I can't be satisfied until I'm the best versus um, like I want to be my best and it's exciting and, and, and as I improve I, I it kind of it feeds on itself in a, in a positive reinforcement. I'm not sure exactly, you may have insights on that which I'd love to hear. But both of those, so somewhere in there I'd like to, to learn from these groups. I think I'm generally more in the category of good job. And I've, been try, I've, I've kind of started to become more critical of myself. Good job in my own life and good job when I'm in a leadership role. I had a, a Burning Man camp meeting this weekend and some things are going awesome in the camp and some things need some redirection and some more communication and some, you know, some fixing. And I, this topic was on my mind is like, okay, we can improve in some areas as a group. And I need to make sure that I'm clear about that and not just say good job, good job, good job. In most areas of the camp, because the camp experience is one of artistic expression and it's one of, it's a, it's a, it should be a fun thing, that if somebody takes on the role of shower builder, whatever they come up with on the shower, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna say good job. If it works as a shower, good job, I'm stoked. I'm appreciative, I, that's authentic and, and true. Um, I've seen camps where people, the, the people who are in charge of the vision, you know, hold to a much higher, uh, you know, specific stand, I won't say higher, but more a, a more rigid vision of what it's supposed to be and, and, and get very upset and very frustrated when it doesn't end up that way. I think that I try you know, to be more of a good job, good job, it's working, good job. And because of that, I think we've had unexpected results. Sometimes I think when that going with the flow, that floating more attitude can bring you to magical places that you didn't expect and you weren't planning for. And in some ways it's kind of like the Zen path versus the more uh, Western goal-oriented path or the, the Tao versus um, the mind and uh, and the, the, the uh, I think it's 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 a very challenging place in the Western world to be because we do want to be successful and that requires discipline and practice and work and you know, we also want to be at peace and happy and that requires stillness and flow and surrendering to the Tao. And finding the balance between those two is a real, it's a real struggle, I think. So, sometimes I feel like I've got it all figured out and the flow has got me exactly where I'm supposed to be. And sometimes I feel like I don't know where I'm going, how come I'm so off track what could I have achieved if I just would have been as disciplined? I look at you know, certain YouTube stars or I look at um, people just killing it with certain um, social media things and, and I look at how long I've been doing things like, wow, if I had the discipline or if I put my mind to it rather than just kind of trying to do what felt right in the moment, who knows what kind of success I could have. All the while, I feel more successful in other areas than I ever dreamed possible. I had, I got a, a message this morning from a friend, uh, a group message from a friend and his girlfriend who, who sent me a note saying, "Hey, remember a year ago when you, you had dinner at our place and we had grace? You said we said we, we, some thankful blessings before we ate. We've been doing it every meal since." And we invite all our friends to do it whenever they're with us. So we just wanted to thank you. It's made a big difference in our lives. And that's kind of really awesome too. So I think at the end of the day, maybe 
maybe that is the success that that I am the most concerned about and I do care the most about. But I certainly don't think it's one is right or one is wrong. And I would like to have a little bit of that discipline and quest for greatness rub off on me just so I could maybe get a little charge in the step. But another part of that success is the consistency of this experience and the 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 true joy and peace that I find in connecting with this community once a week and sharing this moment of just heart opening into whatever it is that is flowing on this day and so I am truly grateful that we have this moment I'm truly thankful for the time that you spend um, opening up your vibration, shining your light, and listening and sharing and being you. It is a true gift, and if, if, if that message is resonating, if it's reflecting between us and out into the world, well then, that is probably a success far beyond state championship. So thank you. I love you. I even had, as I, I was before the, this broadcast, I ran up to the juice place to get a quick juice because uh, I'm still off coffee and I was hoping to get a little, maybe a little energy because I miss that energy from the coffee. And as I was walking up the street, these two super cool looking surfer guys with big curly long heads, they have either dreads or cool long hair, it was like, Amnesian! And I looked back to him and just kind of gave us both of these as, I was, as they drove by and it was, that felt pretty cool too. <sighs> Let's have a hug. Grab yourself by the shoulders. Mmm. And know that all of these directions and paths and definitions of success are all part of the game. It's all part of the story we tell. It's all part of the adventure that we allow ourselves to, to enjoy or be stressed by or just the, the whole roller coaster ride of life is all in that realm of the story. Beneath that, we don't need to do anything. There's nothing we need to do. We are perfect. We are divine expressions of love. We are miracles. And just being and focusing on love and appreciation is all that we really need to do in the world. So let's, in this moment, let go of any of those stories of mastery or practice or greatness just recognize that there is greatness in being alive. There's greatness in being present. There is greatness in just allowing your consciousness to observe, appreciate, witness this amazing experience of life. This amazing collection of other conscious beings that we can connect with and love and help and learn from and advise. We are all connected and that is a greatness beyond all others. Let's take three breaths together in through the nose and out through the mouth. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and all of Warriors, happy Hug Nation. Thank you.
I love you.